We are here disrupting business as usual for ICE and the deportation machine here in Rhode Island. Because when we say never again, we mean it. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. We're going to hear from a member of our community about how ICE and the deportation machine affect our siblings here in Rhode Island. Let's give it up for our friend, our neighbor, Daisy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daisy. I am a Christian believer of Spanish and indigenous heritage, Mexican to be specific, or better known as Mestizo, one of the most attacked minorities in the United States. My family and I have been victims of ICE's forms of oppression. ICE is destroying families and killing innocent children all across the country. Our immigrant community is being targeted just, just as the Nazis were targeting Jewish 74 years ago. And as Jewish immigrants and allies, it is our responsibility to demand the closure of ICE facilities and to demand them to stop deportations. Deportations have to stop now! 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 I'd like to read to you a verse of the Bible where God tells Moses to advocate for the Israelites who were slaves of the ancient Egyptian people. Exodus chapter 9 verse 1 says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Verse 13 and 14 say the following words, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart. Let my people go! Let my people go! Let my people go! Let my people go! My people go. We can see that God does not rejoice about the injustices in this world. And just like Moses said, to Pharaoh back in the times of the Bible to let his people go. I say to the ice facilities all across the country, let our people go. 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 This is where my story begins. Last year, on a Monday morning of early October. It was a nice sunny day. It seemed like a perfect day to spend time with my family. In fact, we had planned to go out for a walk in the park later that afternoon. That morning, that morning as it was usual for my dad, as it was usual for my dad on his days off of work, he was going to do some mechanic work on a car while my mom was making homemade tortillas. I was still sleeping in my room when I heard my brother cry out in anguish, My dad! My dad! To which I thought he had probably hurt himself downstairs. I rushed out of bed and down the stairs desperately. My mom came behind me with my little sister in her arms. I opened the door of the stairs. I opened the door to see my father getting arrested by approximately four or five cops and unnecessary amount of people to detain one person and several patrol cars where 
were around in the surrounding areas. The first thing I asked them was why? Why was he getting arrested when he had legal consent to be in the country to begin with? But I didn't get an answer from the policeman. Instead, my dad started giving me instructions on what to do with his financial accounts, with his cars, with his job, how to tell his ball that he had been arrested, unfairly arrested. Everything, basically. It almost seemed to me as if he had already known what was going to happen, that the day was coming. This was a moment when I realized that my dad had been living with the fear of getting picked up by ICE every day for the past month. All the pieces of the puzzle had come together. This was the reason why he had that sad and worried look on his face very often. He was well aware of the raids, the deportations, and everything happening to Latin immigrants around, around the country. And he knew that he was very vulnerable. Although it seemed like my dad remained strong that day while he was getting arrested, I know, I know that he was trying to, his best to swallow his tears. It was his way of saying to us, of encouraging us to believe that everything was going to be okay. But it wasn't. It never was and it never will be the same. That day, all of our dreams crushed into pieces. You got this, mommy. With my dad being in custody, and my mother unable to get out of the house due to the fear of getting picked up by ICE as well, I was left on my own to look after my family. I was the only one in the family able to visit my dad. Visiting my dad was a sweet and sour part of my day. I had always seen my dad as, a, as my strong superhero. And to see him behind bars, to see him behind a blurry window, and unable to even touch his hand during the visitation, reminded me of how vulnerable the white supremacist community had made us. During my dad's days in jail, I wrote a letter to, a, to the judge to allow us, and I said to him, I asked him to allow us to have our dad back for the holidays. His arrest happened back in October. I expressed to him on that letter how horrific it would, have, it would be for us, especially for my three-year-old little sister, who would spend her Christmas away from our dad. But who knows? He may have not even read that letter, and or the other letters that all his friends and all our family had sent to the judge. After that, my dad was then deported to Mexico. We felt lonely on Christmas, while others were sitting at their tables enjoying dinners and having the best time of their life, probably. All our family could feel was sorrow, misery, and affliction. Our brothers and sisters detained by ICE are being denied of their basic human rights. They say facilities will provide lawyers and that each legal process will be deeply will be analyzed carefully to make a fair decision in regards to their particular case but those are all lies they are all lies while my father was incarcerated in bristol county jail he was never provided pro bono legal services he was never offered pro bono services Shame. 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 Their meals are nearly raw, and oftentimes they are given expired food. And that's if they get lucky to eat that day. The canteen is expensive. It is expensive to try to buy food for them. A pack of cookies, of four cookies was around 14 or 15 dollars and sometimes even more but of course you can't let your relative die in jail they don't care if they 
detainees have health issues. They don't care if detainees are suffering from a severe from a severe disease. They don't care. Shame. 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 Nobody deserves to experience this cruelty in their life. All the money going to our detention is an unnecessary waste of money that we could instead use towards infrastructure renewal, we could use towards education, Medicare, and even to support the livelihood of immigrants instead of criminalizing them, just like they criminalized my dad. He suffered an unjust accusation, a false accusation, a white woman, a white woman to be specific. As a country, we need to ensure justice, protection, and freedom to all the undocumented 